Hey, what's going on folks? This is part two of a two-part series on replacing the valve cover gaskets on an 05 Honda Odyssey Touring. So if you haven't watched the first part of this uh, series, take a look down in the description there. I'll have a link to the video down there for you. Please watch it first, but uh, other than that, here we go. Let's get into it. Okay, now we're going to put this uh, rear valve cover on. And uh, just like we did the front ones, we're going to take a little bit of this oil right here and we're going to lubricate these spark plug tubes just make it easier for them to go on and something special about this rear valve cover you can see you got this little uh, uh, housing right here um, what you got to do is you got to put a little bit of uh, liquid gasket right there I'm going to use Honda bond and uh, refer to your manual for the specification on what kind of liquid gasket to use for your vehicle I, th I think Honda bond is just fine for mine so I'm gonna put about a pea size uh, dollop of uh, Honda Bond right there in that little crease and there's another crease right behind there that matches up to that one just on the other side there I'm gonna put a little bit of Honda Bond there too now something you got to be worried about when you're doing this once you put that Honda Bond down you only have so many minutes before you can have that valve cover on and have it torqued down uh, I think it's about four minutes or so it's, it's not that much time so we have to move fast once we get that dollop on those dollops on there we're gonna have to get that thing in there and get it torqued down have your bolts ready to go right up there because uh, once you get that rear valve cover on you need to go ahead and get to torquing it down I'm gonna put a little dollop of Honda bond right there same thing on the back side All right, we gotta get rocking and rolling. Let's go ahead and get this thing in here. Let's pull our bar harness up just a little bit there. <clears throat> now, something you wanna be concerned about, you don't want this gasket to fall out of that lip. So before you actually set it down, and then the place on this other side here, I got my hand reached around the back side and I'm feeling it all the way around. And I can feel it still in that channel all the way around. So that's how you wanna check that before you actually set it into place. Make sure that that gasket doesn't fall out cause it is a little tight. And by the way, you can Loosen that harness up just a little bit more if you have to. Um, this is the way I like to do it, so that's why I'm doing it that way. Let's go ahead and push it down onto those spark plug tubes. And there we go. We got it in place. Now we need to hurry up and put our uh, bolts in. because We need to go ahead and get this thing torqued down. Let's go ahead and start them by hand. We got three short ones in the front. And three short ones and or three long ones, excuse me. So we got three short ones in the front and two long ones in the back. So three of these in the front, two of those in the back. Just run that down by hand right there. Run that one down by hand. That's back yonder. Just run this one down by hand. Now these long bolts, you got to do them by feel. You can't really see back there, and I know I'm not really giving you a good visual of this. And I apologize. I just there's no room back there for me to film, guys. We got one back there. You kind of try to pay attention to where these things go before you actually take them out. That'll give you a better feel for where to put them when you get the thing back in. Put your other one in. All right, let's go ahead and torque these down. Now use your uh, repair manual for that specification. And yes, you don't see me using a torque wrench on this. I would suggest using a torque wrench to torque it down properly. And that's not shown here. So get that one. You're gonna kind of do these in a sta uh, staggered kind of pattern almost in an outward spiral like we did everything else there actually in an outward spiral like everything else we did right, 
So we got them ran down. Let's, now let's go ahead and torque them. We'll start with the furthest bolt out to the left here as you're looking at the motor in the back. We're going to go ahead and torque it down. This is after we got them all ran down. And the bolt will stop because that little ridge that we had to uh, beat those grommets past will actually stop it. And once you get to that point there, don't go beyond the torque specification in your manual. You know, sorry, I don't have that specification available for you guys. Torque this one down. this one there we go that back one's on there our uh, liquid gasket is still liquid so we beat the time clock on that that's good and uh, we'll go ahead and move on to our front valve cover we've already got it on now we just need to put the bolts in and torque it down now this front valve cover has four long bolts and one short bolt the short bolt goes right up top here let's go ahead and run it down by hand just go ahead and get it started. And your long bolts, one of them goes right here. One goes here, here, and then here. Just go ahead and run them down by hand as far as we can get them. Now we need to torque them down and we're gonna do an outward spiral like we did the back one, or similar to the way we did the back one. Start here, go to that one, go to that one, go to that one, and then go to that one. And I'm running them down little by little, one at a time. I'm not torquing them down all the way initially. Just kind of want to run it down uniformly. Now we're going to go ahead and torque them. Just like that. Back to our rear valve cover. Uh, we're going to have to bolt our harness back down. Uh, one bolt goes right here, the other bolt goes back here. You kind of got to do that by feel because you can't really see a whole lot. This one you might be able to see. I'm going to go ahead and run that down by hand. And let's get this one going too. Kind of feel for the bolt hole back there. Okay, we're going to tighten that one down and tighten this one down with the ratchet. I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, and don't forget your high, or your uh, power steering hose here. It's got that bracket. That bolts down to the back valve cover. you got to do that by feel also. So I'm going to run that down by hand. And then I'm going to tighten that bolt up off camera with the uh, ratchet. Now we got to put our ignition coils in on the back head there. And uh, there is a, uh, a bolt with an Allen receptacle, it's a six millimeter that hold these down. And they actually go in like that. I'm gonna go ahead and put all three of those in on the back there and torque them down off the camera. And as you know, there are three electrical connectors that go to those ignition coils, which I've got in and torqued down. We're gonna go ahead and reconnect those. And you wanna hear an audible click when they're clicked in all the way, just like that. And just give it a little tug on the connector there just to make sure it doesn't come loose. I'm going to do that for all three of them. There we go. Give it a little tug. And this one here. Alright, so those are good. We got our harness torqued down. We got our bracket for our power steering line torqued down. And our coils are in. Now, that little bracket back there, okay, and that little jewel lives right back over here. Let's see if I can get it lit up there for you. And there it is. We're just going to slide that right back on that bracket there. And let's 
kind of hard to get the angle on the dangle right for you to see this, but I'm going to try my best. Oh, goodness. I need an Academy Award for this. There we go. It's in there and it's locked in. So be sure that harness is reconnected that bracket there. Now we can go ahead and start knocking out some of these electrical connections back here. Let's get that get RTV off of that right there. It don't belong. Let's see here. Dropping some light on the subject there. So we got one right here. All right. Let's reconnect this one. That goes right here. Clicked in. You heard it. And we got this one right here. Reconnect it. Make sure it clicks. And we better not forget our ground strap right back here. Make sure we got that bolted back up and screw it back on there. Go ahead and torque it back down with a ratchet. Let's put our front ignition coils back in. Disregard that number six on that ignition coil there. That's not cylinder number six, by the way. Let's put our bolts in. We go in, let's go ahead and torque them down. Same thing for the other two. Go ahead and torque those down also. Okay, we got our coils torqued down. Let's go ahead and take our harness and flip it back over on this front valve cover here. Just like so. We're going to put our bolt in right there and right there. And I'm going to torque those down off camera. All right, let's go ahead and reconnect our coils. Make sure it snaps. Give it a tug. Make sure it's in there. Make sure it snaps. Give it a tug. Make sure it's in there. Make sure it snaps. Give it a tug. Make sure it's in there. I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, oil cap back on. Snug it down. Let's go ahead and put our dipstick back in. Now this harness, where it goes down the side here, I didn't explain this too well earlier. Uh, it's got this little clamp that holds the harness this bracket right here uh, you're supposed to be able to squeeze those two tangs together in the back there and let that uh, uh, little rivet mechanism come out if you will I can't really get a good angle on that to show you any better but now what we need to do is we need to reconnect our two electrical connectors down there and then uh, place them back on that bracket like they were before now remember this one I broke earlier so I'm gonna have to zip tie that up uh, but there is a proper way to do it other than a zip tie. Uh, that just happens to be what I got to do in this situation here. So I'm going to go ahead and because uh, I got to put both of my arms down there to do this. I'm going to reconnect them off camera and then I'll show you the end, end result. All right, so I have both of them reconnected. I'm going to try to show you how this one slides up onto that bracket right there if I can. See, you got that slit right there it goes up on this part right here let's see if I can get down there and show you and I know you ain't seeing a bit of that I'm sorry guys I just slid it up there and it clicked and I'm doing a little tug backwards and it's not wanting to come off so Ta-da, there it is. Sorry you couldn't see it, guys. And this one in the front here, it's supposed to work the same way. It's supposed to slide down. Like I said, I broke it. I'm gonna have to zip tie that up to uh, secure it. So just don't do the same thing I did. I'm also gonna have to zip tie this up too where that little strap broke on me there. Now I know you didn't see me do this earlier because I did it at the uh, shop when I put the valve covers in the parts cleaner, but I took this hose off of this front valve cover here I'm just going to go ahead and put it back on there and get it in place and get it ready for the uh, upper intake plenum to go on. 
And now what I'm going to concern myself with is cleaning up my mating surface on my lower intake portion here. I'm going to clean that up real good uh, with my scouring pad. And as you can see, it's, it's not really that bad, so there's not a whole lot you got to do. Actually, you could probably just take a, a rag soaked with brake clean and just wipe that up real good, and that should be okay. Uh, this here, I might need to scuff up a little bit there. Now, also on the throttle body, you can see I've got a little bit of gasket material that stayed on the throttle body when I took it off. I'm going to take a razor blade and kind of scrape that up without marring the surface of the mating surface of that throttle body. I'm going to scrape that up real good and then take my uh, scouring pad to it, clean it up real good, and wipe it down with some brake clean. And to tell you the truth, on this surface right here, guys, uh, the less scraping that you do, the better, or scouring that you do, the better, because you've got a multi layer. Uh, metal gasket that mates up right there and you, you don't want to gouge it and, and tear it up uh, So really just wiping it down with some brake clean ought to be okay for that around here Like I said, you can use a little bit of sc scouring pad on that and you should be okay So we have our uh, surface all cleaned up right here and I use a scouring pad down here just a little bit But you can see it's perfectly clean uh, Also, I cleaned the back side of the throttle body real good. I uh, use a scouring pad on that Real lightly, real light pressure, guys. Not a whole lot needed. And then uh, the bottom of the intake manifold, where it mates up to the, uh, or excuse me, the bottom of the upper plenum of the intake manifold, where it mates up to the bottom section of the intake manifold. You want to make sure this is perfectly clean. Also, uh, I basically was able to take a rag uh, and wet it with some brake clean and just wipe this surface up real good, and it was okay. I did scuff this area up right here. Uh, with a scouring pad though and then also the uh, where the throttle body makes up to the intake manifold You want to make sure that that's perfectly clean also now. We need to put our multi-layered metal gasket on That goes through that little Stud there and then that one goes to the stud here Kind of got to put it on there evenly or it won't go There we go Just like that now we're gonna put our upper portion of our intake manifold Back on the lower portion and this stud is going to go into this hole here and this stud is going to go into this hole here right here so I'm going to lift this whole thing up flip it over and set it in place so I got it held with one hand I'm going to try to do this with just one hand here it's going to be a little difficult but I'm just going to try to eyeball it and you want to make sure you don't want to put this thing down on those studs and just kind of rake it around like that because you're gonna gonna end up marring this surface here and you don't want to do that guys so what you can do is you can look through that little hole right there kind of see your stud coming through it and then look through that little hole right there and then kind of kind of and then kind of look for that stud to come through that hole there and just with both hands on one on that side and one on this side just kind of easily lower it down like that so I just took my own advice and sat you down and used both hands. <laughs> you see that stud comes up through that hole there, and then that stud comes up through that hole there. And like I said, you can kind of eyeball it as you're going down with it. Make sure that those studs come through the right hole. And now remember, we got two nuts. One goes there on that stud, and one goes on that stud there. So I'm going to go ahead and just by hand get my nuts threaded there. Let's go ahead and get this one started by hand. And then the rest are bolts. And, and by the way, I took these nuts and bolts and I sprayed them down real good with some brake clean. Um, I'm gonna try to be as clean as possible. If you could, uh, it always helps things to, to go better when things are clean. And I'm just gonna take this socket here and then run them down all the way by hand all of them until they stop just finger tight and I'm gonna to need to torque down my uh, upper intake plenum and I'm gonna do a sequence uh, like this I'm gonna start with this bolt here torque it down torque this one down torque that one down that one down then I'm gonna torque this one down this one down then I'm gonna do that one then that one and then that one Refer to your repair manual for your torque specification on that, and you will need to use a torque wrench for this to do it correctly. So I got my uh, 
bolts torqued down in sequence. Uh, just like I explained earlier, I did that off camera. Now what I need to do is clean my mating surfaces really well. I'm going to use that scouring pad and just clean up any surface that the uh, gasket might made up to. Uh, we're going to be bolting the top portion of the upper intake on here in just a moment. So we're going to make sure our mating surfaces are cleaned. On this top portion here, go ahead and take your scouring pad to the inside of this channel all the way around in any portion of it where that gasket might uh, sit inside there. So we're going to get that all the oil residue and coking off and, and anything that might cause a poor, uh, a poor seal with the gasket between this portion of the upper intake and the upper intake. And just for grins and giggles here, I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like before and after you clean these uh, surfaces up. See all this build up right here? And you can see where the, the gasket actually laid in there before. Um, that's basically the area you want to concern yourself with, that, uh, this area here in the surrounding area where the gasket mates up there. So I'm going to go ahead and clean it up and show you what it's supposed to look like afterwards, just to so you have an example. Here that section is after I've scrubbed it for about 30 seconds roughly. You see it's nothing but metal. And right over here you see the varnish buildup starting, uh, starting back up right there. I didn't hit that part, uh, but this area right here is about what you want. Anywhere where that gasket is going to mate up, get it clean just like that. Um, and also, after you're done with this whole thing and cleaning this up too, you want to clean those channels up really well. Uh, that gasket sits inside that little inlaid area there. Get all the varnish and whatnot out of that. And uh, take you a, a, a rag, wet it with some brake clean, and wipe out those surfaces. Wipe out those channels real good with the wet... Uh, the wet rag and wipe down all those surfaces with the wet rag that way you're, you're sure you got this thing good and clean and it's completely dry and then you can go ahead and put your gasket in and uh, bolt on the top portion of the upper intake all right so we got all of our mating surfaces cleaned up really well there including on the top portion of the intake plenum now your uh, your gasket set may or may not come with a seal for this uh, mechanism right here um, it's pretty easy to change that seal out. You got two Allen head uh, bolts that hold it on. They're five millimeters. You just unscrew those and the thing comes right off. Now, um, I don't think this matters, but just in case, make sure you pay attention to what position those butterflies are in before you take it out. Whenever you take it out, or whenever you go back in with it, you wanna make sure that those butterflies are in the same position as they were when you took this off. I don't think it matters, but just in case, just make sure you put it back exactly the way it, it came off. So I'm going to go ahead and take those two bolts out, and we're going to change the seal on this here. All right, so we got our bolts out. We're just going to pull this right off just like that. You see, you got a little, uh, got a little wheel in there. It looks like you got a Hall Effect switch or sensor right there, and then you got this gasket that goes around it. Let's go ahead and pull that gasket right on off. And put your new one in there. We'll take our new gasket, put it in there. You got that little key that goes on the top there. And we can see that our butterflies are still in the same position. Actually, I don't know if you can see that or not. They're completely closed. We're just gonna put this right back up on that, uh, that cog there, just like that. Oops starting to move on me. There we go. Get our bolt holes lined up. Right now I can go ahead and put my bolts back in there and uh, torque it down. Use your repair manual for that specification. Right, so we got it reinstalled there. Everything's in the same position. And now we're ready to put our new gasket into this top portion of the upper intake plenum. Now my set did not come with a new gasket that goes right here uh, and it is a little bit boogered up. I'm gonna have to reuse this because I can't wait for it to show up in the mail. Uh, my wife needs her van back so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back on but I do have a new gasket that goes around the outside here so I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and then I'm gonna uh, just pop these back in those holes there. You see you got three holes on this. It receives these little uh, push rivets, if you will, which is a part of the uh, the gasket. I don't think you would really call that a push rivet. 
just a little push retainer I reckon so I'm going to clean that up pop that back on then we're going to put our outside gasket on so here's our new gasket we're just going to go ahead and place it right on top of this here and you basically just put the gasket into the uh, the channels that are supposed to receive it there you just push it in just like that and you're just going to do this all the way around and on the inside here looks like we're pushed in all the way all the way around and that gasket is fully installed so we're just going to take this so I'm going to do this one handed here and just set it right on top there you got uh, two studs that come through all right now we're ready to put our bolts in and our nuts and then torque that down alrighty so at this point here guys you just want to have your nuts and bolts in finger tight not torqued down now I'm going to torque this thing down but you're not going to see me do it I'm going to do it off camera and the sequence that I'm going to use is this right here and disclaimer this is a sequence I'm using just by experience this is not from a repair manual use this sequence at your own risk if you choose to use it uh, I would suggest using a repair manual for the proper torque spec and the sequence this is my sequence this bolt here this bolt here this bolt that bolt that bolt this bolt this bolt that bolt that bolt that bolt that bolt that bolt now we're going to uh, reconnect this here make sure it snaps give it a tug make sure it's on we're going to go ahead and re reconnect this hose here Our hose clamp up. There we go. Okay, now this is uh, where the throttle body goes right here. And before we put the throttle body on, I think it makes it easier to go ahead and bolt this up here. This is the one I dropped the uh, the bolt on earlier, and I still haven't found it. I'm going to have to find it. <laughs> so there's two bolts that hold this on, one on the top, one on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put the bolt in there, torque it down, and I guess I'll find that other bolt later on and torque it down also. And then this line reconnects right here. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. All right, I got it on there, and I'm going to go ahead and take my hose clamp, move it on down here into place where it's supposed to go. Try to, anyway. There we go. Take our electrical connector, reconnected, snapped, we're good. Then this hose back here for the brake booster, go ahead and reconnect it. Let's get our hose clamp back into place here. There we go, now we're ready to put our throttle body on. All right, so I got my gasket on for my throttle body here and for me, uh, my gasket is a little different than the gasket that came off of it. It's got this little dippy to do right here. And in my estimation, uh, and I don't, don't have a manual, like I said, this, this way that I have it oriented right here makes the most sense. Uh, you can either put it on this way or have the dippy to do down that way. Uh, you can't have it clocked 90 degrees and stick it on there because the uh, bolt holes won't line up with these studs here. Uh, but I took it and I put it on the back side of the throttle body and the way that it's oriented right there it seems to cover all the holes adequately and uh, so this is how I'm going to install it uh, of course like I said refer to your repair manual like I said I don't have one uh, make sure you, you have that installed correctly you, you may not have this issue with the uh, differences in gaskets there so just FYI yeah, so let's go ahead and take our throttle body and just uh, run it right on up on them studs right there like that. Go ahead and put my two nuts on the top on, and then I've got two bolts that go in on either side down there. I'm going to go ahead and run them down by hand, and then I'll torque them down to specification. All right, so I got my throttle body on, and the way that I torqued them down, or the sequence I used, is I did a crisscross pattern. I started with this one, went down to this one, then I went up to that one and then I went down to that one and snugged them all down real good um, now we need to go ahead and reconnect our hose back here our breather hose let's go ahead and put it up on that little nipple there 
we go. We gotta put our hose clamp back in place there. Reconnect our throttle body electrically here. Snapped, and I'm tugging on it, and it's not coming out, so that's in. And now, what I'm gonna do, oh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this here. Good tug. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my uh, air filter housing back on, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then proceed from there. So we've got our air filter housing back in. Uh, got this hose clamp tightened down here. Uh, this tube is back into the uh, air inlet, uh, air inlet pipe there. And then our four bolts that hold the top portion of the air filter housing are tightened down. And now we need to go ahead and reconnect this here until it snaps. Give it a tug. Let's go ahead and run it into the uh, loom holders here there we go okay at this point here guys uh, go ahead and double check everything make sure you got everything plugged back in make sure you got every hose reconnected with every hose clamp repositioned uh, make sure all your nuts and bolts are tight and just do a real good visual inspection uh, go ahead and check your oil make sure you got plenty of oil in it make sure your radiator cap is tight and then after that, once everything is good, what I would suggest doing is starting it. Let it run. Let it run for a good long bit. All the time monitoring it for oil leaks. Uh, you want to check for oil leaks around uh, any gasket that you, you may have uh, removed and replaced. I suggest using a mirror with a flashlight towards the back there. Not a bad idea. Even getting up underneath the vehicle. Be sure you have it supported properly and jacked up properly so that you can safely do that. There's not that information in this video though, so you got to get that information elsewhere on how to jack up your vehicle and support it safely. So go ahead and let it run for a little while, check for leaks. If you don't have any leaks, then it's time to go ahead and put your engine cover back on. And that's pretty easy to do. You just pop it right back down. You got these two rivets here, or uh, I'm sorry, grommets. Um, I'm missing one on the other side there. The engine cover goes back on. The little uh, teats push down into the, uh, the grommets there. And then, of course, you got your screws in the front here that uh, you push in and give a 90 degree turn on each side there. And after that, guys, uh, you're home free. Make sure you don't have any uh, warning lights on on the dashboard. If you do, you need to have your PCM scanned. Make sure you don't have any uh, diagnostic trouble codes after this. If you do, you may have left something disconnected. So be sure to check that, guys. Guys, if you have any questions, please comment down below. I do appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please read the entire description down below before you attempt this or apply any of this knowledge. There's more very important information that you need to know down in that description. You must read it. If you're watching this video on a platform other than YouTube.com, I would suggest going to YouTube.com forward slash Barbers Auto Help. Find this video there. The description will be beneath it. Please read it. Again, thank you for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.